G'day, my name is Pete. You're watching Ahead of the Curve. Well, there's an article going around in the media today saying that petrol prices would have to hit $3.85 a litre in order for an EV owner to recoup the extra costs associated with owning an EV over a five-year period versus that of an average petrol car. So the article in the ABC uh, on the ABC website today reads that the Australasian Convenience and Petroleum Marketers Association, or the ACAPMA, says that petrol prices would have to reach three dollars and eighty-five a litre before a consumer could recover the extra costs of an EV within five years. First of all, this has got under my skin a little bit because I call BS on this. First of all, there is no figures that uh, arrive at this three dollar and 85 a litre um, petrol price in the article anywhere there's no links to a study that shows the assumptions or anything that goes into arriving at this figure so i'd love to see what those are because i'd love to be able to compare the aca pma set of assumptions versus my set of assumptions that i've used um, in the following table here um, so this table is out of an article that I published on the Tesla Owners Club of WA or of Western Australia um, website at tokwa.org.au, but I'll include the description, um, sorry, I'll include the link in the description section below to that article so you can read it for yourself. I'll also include the link to the Driven article and it was also uh, published in the West Australian newspaper. But um, I'd love to compare the two sets of assumptions um, they went into arriving, at, you know, at their figures versus my figures. So um, speaking of assumptions, so I've looked at charging and fuel. So I've tried to be as objective as I can. In fact, I've given the benefit of the doubt towards the petrol car. So I've been a bit more favorable to the petrol car in that I've looked at the average petrol price over the last 10 years. So not the $2 a litre that's being charged at the moment, but the average over the last 10 years in Australia. But I haven't compared that to an average electricity tariff over the last 10 years. In, in fact, I've compared it to the average standard tariff in Australia in 2021. So not the average electricity tariff over the last 10 years versus average petrol price over the last 10 years, but 2021 electricity tariffs and prices have been rising in Australia for electricity over the last 10 years. So I've looked at the 2021 electricity tariff versus the 10 year average in the uh, petrol um, price at the Bowser um, in, in Australia. And I've, in terms of the electricity tariffs, I've looked at standard tariffs. Now, we all know that you can uh, sign up for a time of use tariff. There's EV specific tariffs, which work out a lot cheaper than the standard tariff. In fact, you can put solar PV on your roof unless you have it already. In, and, you know, the electricity supplied by that solar PV system, you could argue, is effectively free. But I have I haven't taken any of that account into account. I've taken the standard electricity tariff, which is the highest tariff, and I've taken the average across the whole of Australia in 2021. I've also looked at servicing and maintenance. I've looked at insurance. I've looked at registration, licensing, uh, compulsory third-party insurance in the states where it's applicable in Australia. And I've also assumed that both cars were fully financed. So obviously the Model 3, the, the drive-away price or the upfront cost is $23,000, $24,000 more so the finance costs will naturally be more both the principal and the interest repayments so i've taken all that into account and i've asked myself the question so let's look at a hypothetical situation where or a real situation where you go out tomorrow and you buy a tesla model 3 so i've looked at the standard range plus the 2021 model now it's called the rear wheel drive of the tesla model 3 and versus an average internal combustion engine car in Australia at a cost of roughly about 41000 And I've assumed that, you know, you buy the Tesla Model 3, your neighbour buys the average petrol car, and you sell both cars after just three years. Obviously, the longer you hold on to your Model 3, the better off you'll be. But let's assume that just after a very short three-year period of ownership, let's have a look at the figures you'd be $12,618 better off. So you'll have an extra 12 and a half grand left in your bank account after that three year exercise versus your neighbor. But then I've decided to take this even one step further and ask myself the question, well, let's assume that the ACA PMA manages to convince all its petrol and diesel uh, service station owners to go out tomorrow and give away petrol for free. 
So let's assume the petrol price is zero. What would the figures look like then? In fact, even if petrol was given away for free, you'd still be $5,782 better off with a Tesla Model 3 versus a petrol car over just a three year period. And remember, the longer you hold on to your Model 3, the better off you'll be. But then I've decided to take this even one step further and ask myself, well, what would the petrol price have to be in order for the two to be roughly equivalent? In fact, the petrol price would have to be a negative $1.16. Yes, you heard me right. So the petrol station would have to pay you $1.16 per litre. So after putting in 100 litres of petrol, they would, give you, they would have to pay you $116 and the Tesla Model 3 would still work out $1 better off over a three-year period uh, versus an average petrol car in Australia. If this has got under your skin, similar to how it's got under mine, or if you'd like to find out more, I've actually included a link to a video that I did a couple of months ago comparing the servicing and the maintenance costs of a Tesla Model 3 versus an average Australian petrol car. So feel free to check that out. I'll also include the three links to the article that I wrote a couple of months ago as well. So feel free to check that out. Um, if you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone else that might find this valuable, please do share the video. Um, if you have any comments, uh, whether positive or negative, irrespective of which side of the argument you, you sit on, as long as your comments are constructive, I'd love to hear from you. So feel free to leave your comments uh, down below. But as always, stay safe, stay sustainable and stay ahead of the curve. Ciao.